Hello, everyone, and welcome to, to the next speaker in Open Expo. I'm Gemma Rubio, founder of Define the Fine. We are a company that we help companies to communicate in a better way, more human way. But now let me introduce you to Federic Descamps. He's a father of three cute daughters, and he's an open source enthusiast for a long, long time. He, he loves it as he loves basketball, and he started using my SQL since 3.20 March 1997. And today he's going to be here with us to talk about my SQL 8.0 delivery for a new world. Welcome, Frederick. Come here with me to the stage. Hello. Hello, Frederick. Hello. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having invited me. So, uh... I'm very happy to be here. So let me oh, share my screen. That's great. I want to remember to the audience that if you have any question, you can write in the Q&A. And when, when Frederick finishes the presentation, we will ask all the questions to him. So be ready to, to ask questions. OK, thank you, Frederick. Thank you. So this is OK. People see the, the slides. Is it big enough? or? So uh, welcome to this session. So this session is about MySQL 8 uh, document store and uh, to discover a, a new world, right? So first, every Oracle um, slides have uh, this nice slide, uh, which is about the safe harbor that uh, usually people used to read. You will have the slides, so you will find them uh, and um, it's better to read at that time than to spend too much time right now. So just for... Um, about me, so we started uh, with Gemma explain a, a bit about me. So I am uh, Frédéric Descamps. As you can hear, I'm speaking the most spread uh, language in the world, which is bad English. So uh, if you don't understand something or if I need to repeat, don't hesitate. I am on Twitter, LeFred, you can follow me there. I, uh, I will post a lot of stuff uh, related to MySQL. So I'm a MySQL evangelist. So I manage MySQL since 320. I'm a DevOps believer, so if you have a DevOps question related to MySQL, don't hesitate. I will be around after my talk too. I'm living in Belgium and I have a, a blog, which is lefred.be, where which covers a lot of uh, MySQL stuff uh, other than in the manual. More, uh, uh, let's say, more hands on uh, to what you have to do. So just some little slide about MySQL 8, uh, because MySQL is great, and about MySQL in general. So MySQL, if we check the DB uh, Engine 2020 ranking, we are the most popular open source database. So we are, uh, this is for a long time, and we are very proud of that. And uh, we also received last year the DBMS of the year. So we are very, very, uh, again, happy and proud uh, of this. And uh, maybe you already know, uh, if not, uh, it's uh, something very special this year for MySQL because uh, it is our uh, 25th uh, anniversary. So uh, MySQL is around for 25 years. So we are very proud of that. So go, go back now to uh, what we are doing uh, today. So the, the topic of this session. And uh, I want to talk about the evolution about uh, this web application and modern web application and why MySQL made this document store. So if we go back in the year 2000, right, uh, who was doing this web application? This guy or <laughs> people that look like this guy and, uh, and how they were doing this. They were uh, using uh, something like that. So they, they were uh, the internet, then a router or proxy. Uh, they were using the LAMP stack, so uh, PHP, uh, Apache, and one database. This is mostly for uh, 10 years at least, or a bit more, how uh, web server were done. And people were using relational database that was providing to people uh, data integrity with uh, normalization constraints. So you had foreign keys. So there was very strict on uh, how you could uh, put your data in a database. Of course, something very important. It was uh, uh, not maybe at the very uh, 20 years ago, not yet. But uh, since we had uh, InnoDB in MySQL, uh, ACID was very important. 
So atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability, all that is very important in a relational database. So we were asset compliant, you have transaction in a relational database, and of course, SQL. So very powerful language that uh, everybody um, wanted to, to master. But these days, all that has changed completely. So now, uh, these days, who is making this uh, web application, like this modern web application? The guy looks more this guy. So it's why and how they are doing this. Now they are not using like one language like the PHP, but people are using uh, Node.js, they are using Python, they are using MySQL, they are using also other document stores like, uh, so to store their JSON. So why this? It's the, the first answer, because I go around uh, on university to talk to all these young developers and stuff, it because developers, they don't really like SQL, uh, SQL anymore. So uh, people, they are uh, afraid to use SQL. They think it's quite complicated. And also uh, they think that uh, mastering SQL will slow down the initial development. And they are right. Sometime uh, when... I do a lot of, uh, I, and I did in my previous job, a lot of con uh, consulting and uh, query optimization was a big part of it because people were not able to write very good SQL all the time. So uh, now people try to avoid it. And also why? Because they don't have the time to learn SQL and uh, because they need to work out and have a, a very nice uh, look like uh, this guy, right? So uh, no more time to, to learn SQL. This is a joke, and but uh, so what are the developers and what they want now? So people once they use object, they want to use documents. So they just want to use this object and they want to store them. So this is why uh, usually uh, the developers love something that all the DBA hates uh, a lot is the ORMs. ORMs let the developers to store the object or uh, directly from their application to the database, and the database will take or the ORM will take care of storing that in a relational table and make a mess there for a DBA. If you're a DBA, it's a mess, but for developer, it's very easy and very um, quick development. So uh, they just want to deal with this easy object, right? Making CRUD operation when possible, so not no need to use SQL at all to uh, and don't think about what should be my schema. I just want to make a very a quick um, uh, development and, and try and proof of concept and stuff like that very, very quickly. But at the end, when that uh, goes to production, what the developer wants, they also want that uh, their data is uh, kept safe, right? And that uh, if something goes, back or goes wrong somewhere in the application, they could roll back or commit their data. So uh, people want uh, all that. So all we Oh, we do that, right? If I go back to this, right? This is how they do this now. So people are using different language. They are using relational tables, but the developers, certainly when they use new technology, they prefer to store their data, object, documents into uh, a document store. And uh, you will see that uh, what I see in the world, most of the time, people are extracting their data from this no SQL uh, database to put them back in relational data to make analytics. So it's an extra work, uh, extra stuff to learn. And I will come back to that uh, later. So as people, uh, the new developer, what they want, they want to, uh, to use this no SQL databases where they don't have any uh, schema to think about. Right? So no relation in, in, their, in their table is just schemaless. So uh, no schema design, no normalization, no foreign key, no data type, just a big document and put all data to that. So this is what usually developer prefers because it's very quick initial development. I need to add a new attribute to my object. I can do it. I don't need to redesign everything and I don't need to uh, ask uh, the operations after to create uh, yet a new table, a new column in my tables and stuff like that. So it's very quick. It's very flexible. Like I said, you can do uh, whatever you want, add the new uh, attributes, but also embed arrays, embed uh, objects into uh, one uh, document. So 
And also, this is also sometimes very good when there is no uh, easy uh, way to make to make a, a relational uh, model of uh, uh, of the data you want to store, right? And uh, like I said earlier, you can get rid of the RRM because you can store data like the application needs to consume them without uh, uh, passing this uh, RRM that will transform the data to a relational table. And finally, JSON. JSON is very popular. All uh, microservices are using it uh, together and uh, people uh, love to use JSON because it, it's very easy. It's very close to the front end and uh, easy to learn also. So if we put a, uh, parallelize this together, we can see that this is how the data is seen by the old DBAs like me, right? Uh, we see uh, the data like this with tables that have some relation with other tables, but the developers, they see the data like this, right? So just the, uh, raw data in one big document, very easy to, uh, uh, to fetch or to store. And, but at the end, what happens? At the end, you, uh, the, when your application becomes popular, and this is what I hope for everybody, right? It's to create uh, this data and uh, have a lot of data in their database. But at the end, what they need to do when it becomes better, it's you need to still do analytics. You still need to do some statistics. You still need to do some reporting of, of all that data, or at least the back office needs to do that. So what happened, it's like I said earlier, people on the data that is on a relational uh, database like MySQL, they can do these analytics. They run SQL, they make the reporting and whatever they want. But when they want to do the analytics of all these new documents they have, how they do that? It's very complicated. So they need help. And who's going to uh, give their help for them? Again, the same guy, first guy of the beginning, right? So they need, again, some guru to be able to help them here. And what the guru will do, it will pump all that uh, NoSQL data and usually it's not real time and they will stream the data into a relational uh, database that will be able to uh, get these queries to make analytics reporting and all that so what if there was a way to provide this sql layer and also these no sql capabilities in one uh, uh, single platform that is very um, uh, stable and uh, very with the known technology where a lot of DBAs are able uh, to maintain with a, a very large community, that would be great, right? So where if we need to choose in MySQL, what we decide is why not both in one single uh, platform, right? So this is where the MySQL document store uh, comes, where the SQL is completely now optional and you don't need to copy your data and to duplicate the data uh, between NoSQL and relational to do uh, what you need to do. And I will show you that today. So SQL can be completely optional in MySQL. So let's go back. And this is the design where you can see here MySQL and uh, is uh, storing all the uh, collection, but also all the relational table together in one single machine or duplicate in clusters and, and uh, replicas if you need that, of course, but all on the same uh, architecture. So it's a solution for everybody. So the business owner are very happy because they have the ACID compliance that uh, some uh, document store doesn't have. So in, uh, and by default on many uh, document store, if you plug the, the power, you may lose your data. On MySQL, if you plug the, the power, you don't lose your data. Uh, you can capture everything, but you can keep everything schemaless. And it's very, uh, the business owner is happy because the, the development, uh, it's very, uh, it's more, let's say, more quick because the developers doesn't need to think about any relation. For operation, there is still the performance and the management and the visibility of MySQL because there are they know about MySQL and they know how to use that. It's exactly the same. Same for uh, using replication, same for using backup and restore. All that stays the same. All the tooling around MySQL, because as I said, their ecosystem is very large. All the tooling by third-party tools are still working exactly the same. 
and uh, if you need to make a new uh, up, like the schema upgrades right uh, it's not needed with no sql so you can do that very uh, quickly and the developers they are very happy because they can keep uh, their schema they have all this prototype very quickly and this uh, document model but they also gain the transactions that not all document store supports so let's talk about this uh, our solution uh, in mysql right so the solution is uh, built on mysql json data type so in mysql uh, 5.7 already we have added a new uh, uh, native uh, data type for json documents so we could store json documents in any tables of mysql but we also uh, um, we extend that in mysql 8 where using the xdb api that i will show you later we have a real document store where you can use NoSQL and CRUD operation, but all it's based on this um, uh, data type. But and for the rest, it's exactly plus the XDB API, but it's the, exactly a MySQL uh, standard MySQL server, nothing uh, special. The only, the also a big difference is that the document can be one gigabyte. So uh, this is. Uh, a lot of developers were very happy because one of the most popular NoSQL database has a limitation of 16 megabyte. For me, I, th I thought that 16 megabyte was crazy already, but it seems a lot of people reach that limit. So here it's one gigabyte. And uh, so it's very easy to use and uh, you can use the, the document store code operation also for relational tables, but I will show you that uh, later. So you need to remember that it's MySQL server, with the JSON data type, it's a binary format that makes it very quick and uh, that allows us to do a, a lot of stuff. And uh, it's supported by all the connectors uh, of MySQL that uh, we provide and some community ones. So we provide uh, ourselves connectors for C++, Java, .NET, Node.js, Python, and uh, uh, PHP. Uh, it's not by uh, us only, but by also the PHP community, but we work together to do it and we help other communities uh, to support it. We have also a new shell in MySQL 8 that allows us to, um, to work with the XDB API and also the XAdmin API that I won't talk today here, but that is uh, known for HA. And uh, so you will see the shell can go in JavaScript, in Python or in SQL. You can query your database with, in these languages from the new client, which is MySQL shell. And it has a lot of uh, uh, nice stuff to do. And the XDVPI can also have non-blocking uh, calls with uh, asynchronous calls to the database, and it supports CRUD operation. So let's see how, how it works. So to install uh, the document store, it's easy. You just need to install MySQL 8. Install MySQL shell if you want to do uh, some uh, uh, check by yourself without a programming language directly and install uh, the connectors for your programming language. For example, for PHP, you need to install uh, PHP Pluckle My MySQL XDBPI. For Python, is the MySQL connector Python uh, the one uh, we provide. So, and nothing else. No need to install uh, anything uh, different or load any plugins. Just to be sure that if you want to use the XDBPI to do the CRUD operation, MySQL by default will bind, will listen, on another port, and that port for the X protocol is 33060. So now, you, when you have installed that, you already have this MySQL 8 document store. So what we can do with it? First thing we're going to do uh, with it, it's uh, migrate data out of MongoDB, which is a very known uh, NoSQL uh, document store, and put it into MySQL. So this is how we do. So we use the Mongo export command from MongoDB. We select one collection and the collection is restaurants in our case and we do uh, so we export it and we put it uh, in a file so as you can see it connects to uh, uh, to mysql uh, to mongo and it export all a bit more than 25,000 uh, uh, records so documents and then when we have there what we do so from the shell we can do it in the command line too, but here I wanted to show you the shell. So from the shell, we do util import JSON. We give the the, uh, the file name, 
we says, okay, we want to put that in a schema that we call documents, doc store. The collection will be restaurant. If you don't give any collection, it will take the file name. And because uh, the, there is a Bizono ID in uh, MongoDB, we need to convert them uh, to have something standard. So we say, please convert. And it's done. And as you can see, it imports all the documents in MySQL. Nothing more. So we have exported in one command, imported in one command, and all the documents, 25, a bit more than 25,000 now, are in MySQL. It was very easy. And it is, to be honest, it's very, very easy. When I show that to people, they are always like, whoa, this is cool and easy to do. So now that we have this data, so as you can see, we are using now the, uh, the MySQL shell in JavaScript. This is the default. I can do, okay, give me the records, uh, the documents in this restaurant collection. It's a lot, very a lot. So it's too much to show in one slide. So let's add a limit. So I would add a limit and the limit here, I put limit one, and this is one document. As you can see, this is not a relational table. This is a document that we have stored in MySQL. And this is how we see it. It's a completely document that is a restaurant like it was in MongoDB. So we can do a bit more. So we can say, okay, show me, uh, let's find uh, any documents in the restaurant collection but I want to extract only some attributes and I want the, the name attributes, the cuisine attributes, and I want to limit this to two documents only. And this is how you do that. So as you can see, we are not using any SQL command and we are just using this CRUD operation and one of them is fine to get the data. We can add also uh, some criteria and say, okay, give me all the uh, restaurants that here are in uh, this collection and where the cuisine is Italian, right? So, and show me only the field name and cuisine and limit it to two. And this is how it works. And you can see, we have two documents where the cuisine is Italian and it's limited to two because we have asked two. If you are a developer and you know uh, MongoDB, you may have seen that the syntax is different. If you are not, uh, if you're completely new in, uh, in NoSQL, right? When you see this query, what, what, what are we trying to achieve? Usually I'm asking to the audience, to, to people that doesn't know anything about the NoSQL and they succeed to understand what he's doing. And what are we doing? It's easy. We are doing here. So we are looking for restaurants where the cuisine is French and where the borough it's not in Manhattan. And we want to uh, retrieve three fields, name, cuisine, borough, and limit it to two. So when you read that uh, in English, it's quite easy. If we want to achieve the same in MongoDB, it's a bit different because uh, if, we don't, if you don't want to have all the attributes, you need to put the ID to zero and put one to all the attributes you want. You also need, if you don't want to find something, you need to do a regular expression. So for us, that our goal is to make uh, this technology much more easy for uh, the students and for the new developers. We think that uh, if we start about this setting, uh, this um, syntax uh, like MongoDB, it's complicated. So we want something very easy. And this is why the syntax is uh, different. So what does that mean for developers? Uh, it means that for them, they can do, this is yeah, uh, a very uh, ugly uh, page, right? But uh, it works, I'm not uh, a designer. So this is what they do, this is PHP. Uh, so as you can see, you create a session. So you connect using the MySQL XDB API, you connect to your server, then uh, you use one schema. So in this case is a doc store, right? Then you, you, you select a collection and the collection is restaurant. And then you say, okay, find them and it execute. And then you just do the loop and you display them. So we have uh, uh, made this very easily using only uh, CRUD operations. So where it was not needed uh, to create one single SQL statement. So it's very, very easy. 
So some crowd operation example, so the, the find, we, we knew it, but here it's remove. So remove what, it ha what happens, you will delete some records. And we uh, have also other crowd operation like add. So you can see how we can add a, a document. You can uh, add multiple ones uh, at, uh, at once and all in one array or different ones uh, together. It's all that, uh, that possible. To modify a document, so we use modify uh, um, crowd operation and uh, something I really like, sometimes you don't know, uh, you don't want to retrieve all the, the document and see where, where, where you need to change something, you can create a patch. So in the second, exa the second uh, example here sh shows how to create a patch to modify a document and remove uh, to delete. So this is a very small uh, uh, summary of uh, what can be done with the CRUD operation also. So by default, when you use NoSQL, you do that on collection, but it's possible to do that on relational tables. If you don't create very complicated statement, you can do CRUD operation on uh, relational tables too. All you need to know it's here. As I said, I will share the slides so you can find that. So it's cool. Uh, like I said, in MySQL, we care about your data. Uh, because the MySQL document store is full ACID compliant, because it relies on uh, the very uh, strong uh, and proven MySQL InnoDB uh, engine, right? And by default, these are the settings. I won't spend too much on that, but these are the settings that makes it uh, completely durable, meaning that every time the application receives uh, the return from commit, you are sure even if you have a crash, that the data will be recovered and you will not lose data. Because in MySQL, we care about your data. We have uh, an history of a relational database and we know how important it is. Also, because we are ACID compliant, we support transactions. So here it's an example how to make a transaction. So in CRUD operation, so we start a transaction, we add a document. We see here that we can find because the document was added. Then we do a rollback, we, we look again and the document is not there because you can rollback, commit, save points, all that it supported uh, in MySQL. So this is very good. So we have document store, we have CRUD operation, we have asset, but what makes this a unique solution? Why I'm talking about you uh, on that? And I want to show you why. This is a challenge. You have seen earlier, I added a lot of documents which are restaurant uh, in, uh, in the US, right? And now if I want to list the best restaurants for each type of food, so each type of cuisine, and show the, the, the top 10 of them with the, 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 the best one, the first, how can I do that? And don't forget, this is only JSON documents. If you try to do that on a NoSQL database, you won't, be, you won't find a solution. You will have to retrieve them all and your application has to do that. In MySQL, and this is where uh, it's very cool, it's that you can use all these documents and use uh, uh, SQL when needed. So you can see here, it's documents, but I want to do SQL because I want to do something complicated. And I will use a common table expression. I will use a Windows function. And I will all that on uh, using the JSON table, which is uh, 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 recommended uh, an SQL standard since 2016 to retrieve all that data. And as you can see, this take uh, like uh, less than 10 seconds for sure. It's very, very fast. And you have seen the database can do that. So no need to find something complicated in the application. So now you have the possibility to very to create this very neat uh, and clean code in your application when you don't need SQL. And when it's really needed, you can do it. You can call SQL and make SQL statement exactly on the same data. So I didn't put the data back on the collections, right? I used exactly the same documents, but and also on the same uh, session. So my program is connected only on once on MySQL to do that. So it's very fast. And you can mix them as ever you want. So for example, here we can see, we can do SQL statement or JSON statement, uh, CRUD operation on the JSON document, exactly the same. So this is the JSON table uh, explaining uh, how it works, right? 
and uh, if you want to do a SQL statement uh, on it, so you can you can from this uh, function go and represent any attributes of your document like if it was a relational table when you need it. So if it's not needed, you don't need to do it. But if you want, you can do that. So it's very, it's very fast. Then you say, yes, it's cool. I, I can retrieve the data. But now that I'm in a modern development, I want my application only process JSON. doesn't process any SQL uh, output anymore. No problem. We can, we can say, OK, retrieve, give me a JSON output of this SQL statement. And this is also possible. And then you process only JSON in your application. All that can be done in, uh, in this very quickly. So if you are a DBA and you need to propose this, what uh, will be changed for you, to be honest? The role, it's exactly the same. You need to find the non-optimal lookups and then create indexes, for example, to make it faster. And this is exactly uh, how it works. And I will show the example, but I, I don't want to cover them right now. We won't have time. But uh, like I said, you will you will be able to, to copy paste that uh, when you will have the slide. It's just looking for all the full table scans happening on the database. And then you can retrieve, you see what's wrong and modify that. So here is an example. You do that and you can see, oh, for this uh, document, we can see that uh, these queries are the, uh, the worst, uh, or at least the one doing the most uh, full table scan, so retrieving all the records. So as usually, you can have the query execution plan so uh, to see what's going on. And you can see that, oh, yes, this is a full uh, table scan. This is, this is what the DBA does. If you are a developer and you don't know, this is not very important. In MySQL 8, we have also uh, explain and analyze. So it will run the query and explains you everything where, uh, where it spends time. And you can see, yes, there is a table scan here. So as a DBA, you can just create an index using CRUD operation if you, uh, if you prefer. So here it's just a CRUD operation, create an index. Or if you want to do it as a, in SQL, you can do that too. It's exactly the same uh, way. You both will be the, the same uh, result, making much faster to do that. This is just inf some uh, info about the notation, how, it, how you can go with the command. So you have seen that we have created some shortcuts to do the extract and to do uh, the unquote to make uh, queries much faster when you need to type uh, everything. Uh, it's much better. And uh, these are also recommendation, right? So when you have done the index, you can see that every time we do the same lookup, we are using an index to make it much faster. And instead of retrieving 25,000 uh, documents, we only uh, retrieve two to uh, get the result. So this is very good. If you want to see what the collection looks like in SQL uh, in the database, this is how it looks like. It has this ID that is generated and it's made uh, very, uh, let's say, uh, story in a way that it's very good for InnoDB, so uh, sequential, and, but completely random too. And uh, it has a doc where you put the document, and that's it. And if you create indexes, it will create virtual columns to be just able to create that index, and that's it. But we have a lot of more stuff since uh, in MySQL 8, and you can see we are improving all the time. So we have here now uh, arrays, so and you can do indexes on arrays, so multiple value for the indexes. So it, this is also something uh, uh, new in MySQL 817, uh, and we are in 8020 now. So we are increasing, uh, uh, releasing every three months almost, and we add always a new stuff. So, uh, for example, if you want, in, in this case, you can see an example of, okay, I want to find a member of an array and a, a, for a value. If you don't have index, you do a, tab, a full table scan. If you create this index on the array, you can use also an index that makes it much faster. Before we finish, I want to show you something very really cool, is that MySQL supports check constraint in SQL. So uh, we, we can create constraints. Uh, for example, here, I want to say that the node that we create could not be, uh, has to be between zero uh, and uh, more than one and 10. And if not, it gives you an error and it's not happy. 
We also have new functions which are JSON schema validation. I said earlier people want schemaless, but at the same time, they like to have now, they ask more, oh, yes, I don't want schema, but I want uh, validation in my schema, some rigidity. It's possible too. So we have this uh, function, uh, JSON schema valid. You give the validation strings and, and parameters and uh, the documents, and it will tell you, okay, this one, it's not valid, okay? Then you can you have also a newer function called JSON schema validation report that give you why this was not valid. It's nice, but personally I don't see the advantages of that. But the big advantage it's when you put to the two stuff together, so a constraint on the validation. And at that time when you do that, you can see here that if you add something that it's bigger than the validation or the validation can be, oh, I want, I'm looking for an integer and I didn't receive an integer. I, wa I was expecting a date and I had a string or whatever. Then uh, the, the, the database will tell the application, no, no, the JSON you are sending me is not valid from what I am expecting. So to wrap up, so what do I gain if I use this? Data integrity, asset compliant, transaction and SQL from the relational database world, but also schemaless flexible data structure and easy to start with CRUD operation and NoSQL, of course, uh, from the NoSQL world. So this is very nice all together in one uh, single uh, solution. MySQL 8 is out. It has, uh, these are books written by some of my colleagues or friends uh, related to MySQL 8. And you can see there is one on MySQL and JSON and one on document store uh, uh, directly and one on the shell that can help you. It's time for q and I'm just on time. I had 10 seconds left, uh, so it's good, I guess. Yeah, thank you for the presentation, Freddy. Yeah, perfect on time. Exactly. <laughs> it's really good. Thank you. So yes, remember to everyone that if you have any question to Frederick, you can write it down in the Q&A. Now we have one question for you. So does my SQL have the existing megabytes limitation for docs? So no, the limitation is one gigabyte. Always. Mm -hmm. So it's much bigger. Yes, yes, it's the it's one megabyte. It's the is the limitation of the, the the TCP packet between the client and the server cannot go over that, and this is capped to one gigabyte. Okay, perfect. So we have some more questions. I yes. See the question too. So the next question, yes. I you can read, read for it you. you read it? On what MySQL engines does this work? So this is InnoDB. So this is why is it's asset compliant and it, it gives you durability and uh, isolation and all that stuff and transaction because it's it's used. InnoDB. Okay, perfect. Someone have some more question or someone want to go to the stage with us here and ask, talking to Frederick. You can also do it. Oh, let's see another question. Is this time series as schemeless? Uh, I don't really understand the the question, but if you are looking for just time series data, uh, it depends what you want to put in it, right? Time series, usually it's like a, a time, time and then some data next to it. If it's just a value, you don't need that. If you have a lot of value into it and you, you don't know what you have, you can use a JSON. It all depends what you, you want. Okay, to perfect. So any more questions? No one wants to come to the stage here and ask you. <laughs> so, yes, and are you going to be here later in the table so the people can continue to continue? Yes, I will be there and uh, Maybe one thing uh, related to not really, really yeah. about the question I had, but it was about InnoDB, you know, about this, the, the stuff is this. Usually people before that JSON data tag were using like a blob or mm -hmm. text to store their data. This was not optimized. This was not binary. Very bad for lookup. Here we have 30 uh, function to, to do whatever we want in it. And also, for example, when you modify one, re the record, only this difference, uh, it's uh, modified on the page and not the full 
uh, blob. So if you had a document of one gigabyte and you modify mm -hmm. like one byte, he had to rewrite the, the, the full gig on the database. Now it will modify only the one byte. If you use text, he has to modify everything. If you use JSON data type, you modify only one thing. Same for replication. So it's very yes, it's it's optimized time. for everything. Yes, good. So you are going to stay here in the tables and the people can chat you with you. Remember that then in these 15 minutes, you sure. can chat with everyone. You just need to turn on your camera and your microphone and you can talk with the people sitting in your table. Uh, good Freddy will be here with us. Okay. You have any question? You just go and talk to him, talk to everyone in the tables. It's a good moment to to meet and connect. So we don't have any question. Well, well if then thank you very much, Frederick. And see you everyone in Welcome. 20 minutes. Okay. Bye. Bye bye.